Welcome back. Exercise 22, Creo Parametric 7.0. In this exercise, we're going to take a look at importing IGES files. IGES stands for the Initial Graphics Exchange Specification. Um, first of all, when it comes to IGES files, if you want, go to the instructional manuals on Bertandu1.com. Go to the Creo Parametric. Uh, this will soon be 7.0. I'm going to update that in the future. So keep an eye out for that. But if you go all the way to the back of the book, there's a segment on file translation. And what you can find out here is a little bit of a history of file translation and different types. And here's a list of different types of translators. And they uh, I give you the definition of what they are, like Parasolid, ASIS, DWG, IGES. And here you'll see IGES. What we're talking about is the acronym for Initial Graphics Exchange Specification. A common translator type works with most systems. However, incomplete translations are frequent due to lack of strict regulations on software developers' data creation. Uh, whereas that, the reason I put that on there is because basically STEP, which is, uh, you'll see there's different, what they call application protocols or APs. There's 203, 214. There's more than that, of course. But that, that's the second generation of translator. These are um, essentially ways that you're able to interact and communicate with other CAD systems. Um, nowadays, there are actually a lot of native translators, and those I would suggest you try first. So, for example, if you're coming from uh, Autodesk Inventor, you could actually maybe bring that in, or, or vice versa, like SolidWorks, and there's other types of files. But these are the um, neutral file formats. Okay, so that starts off on page 124. All right, so let's begin. First of all, you've got to grab this file. And if you go to the vertani1.com webpage, go to part files, and you'll find it at the very bottom, or near the bottom, exercise 22, I just, just click on it, and you're going to go ahead and download it. And once you got it, you just hit here. Um, you can show in folder. You don't want to open it because it's not a native file. Okay, mine's acting up a little bit. Um, basically, once you get it in there, oh, here, let me download it. There we go. Okay, here we go. That's a new copy. All right, you just grab it. And then you're going to copy and paste it onto your desktop. I would recommend onto your desktop. Otherwise, uh, it might be a challenge to find it. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and open it up now. I'm going to close this one out. Um, oh, by the way, the thing that we're, our goal here is to be able to get the mass properties. That's one way you could actually tell when you hit preview. You can see here there's actually volume to it. Okay, and the, the mass in pounds. See, that's 2.33 pounds. We're going to set it to uh, route aluminum. Okay. But I want to show that to you. So let's bring that up. So go to open and down. Uh, it should, if you drop down your desktop, just make sure and at your desktop and go over here. And you'll see here's all the different types of translators that you could bring in. So let's go ahead and find, in this case, IGES, which Initial Graphics Exchange Specification and open. Now, before I do that, actually, just to show you this, you could go to Notepad. And when I used to do this years ago, and I'd get translations from customers, sometimes it come from the same CAD system. And it's like, hey, instead of giving me a translation, an IGES file, we actually used to nickname I guess files because you would hope that they were going to come in because they were missing things. Just like if you were to use Google Translate and you type in uh, in English uh, some phrase, and then you want it in Spanish, and you know how it doesn't turn out quite right. There's like gaps in it. There's, it's missing. Same thing could happen with translators. So anyhow, um, what you could do here, you could go to File, Open, and Notepad, believe it or not, and direct it to your desktop and change it to All Files and find that IGES file and open it, the E22 IGES. And you can actually see a little bit of its history here, where it, Look at this. This goes back to 2003. Um, we see it was in Rhino. 
and um, and then it was in SolidWorks. Um, and most likely, I believe the top one is the original, and then it goes down. I've seen it flip flop though. I think before where it's gone through a couple different systems, and um, and so what you can do in that case, if you had like let's say it was Pro Engineer Creo saying, hey, instead of sending me this IJ file, send me the native file. You're not going to have to do any of this work that you're going to see in a second here. Okay, so I'm going to select the E22 IGES inside Creo when I want to open, and I go to import. Now there's some options here. First of all, we do want it to drop into a part file, turn on use templates. Otherwise, if you don't use templates, you don't get the front, top, and right plane and the origin. And sometimes you want you, you want those surf, those planes to actually sketch on. So it's a good thing to have. And there's some other options here. We're not going to go through them all, but let's go ahead and name it E22. I'm going to call mine E22B because I've already made one of these. Okay. Now this model I actually jazzed up a bit. Okay. I beat it up in Rhino, tore it apart a little bit, took out some surfaces just so you could see what it's like. Um, here you can actually see there's some gaps like whenever you uh, I painted the inside green and the outside gray so from the outside you could see if there's any green showing that means that there's a, a hole and then here there's a hole right here you can actually see the opening there all right but one thing you could do otherwise if you can't see those to see if it came in as a solid is you go to um, first of all go to file and then go to prepare and model properties. And you'll see the actual material, go to change and go to standard materials. And we're looking for non-ferrous metals and go with aluminum route, double click on it and hit okay. And it should show up there. Go ahead and uh, hit close. And now in theory, if it is a solid, we should be able to get a weight on it when we do an analysis. So we go analyze or net analysis and the mass properties and hit preview and you'll see everything is zero. So it's just a collection of surfaces with gaps in them. So it's it's like bed sheets. There's like nothing, no, no substance to these things. We want a solid. So here's what you could do. Over on the left, right click on an import feature and edit the feature. Now you'll see there's some options here. We do overall, we want add material. Um, there's some placement options and things we're not going to tinker with, but there's a lot more that this can do than uh, what I'm going to cover, by the way. But anyhow, let's go to see a little medical kit there. This is to fix it. Now you'll see there's some options here. Um, you could check for gaps and slivers um, and things like that. There's geometry checks and, um, all sorts of neat things we're not going to really cover or go into all those but there is a repair okay now the repair tool actually is pretty it works really well the problem is is that once we start adding like putting the big patches in which you can't do on its own is when uh, it starts to become parametric and it's disabled okay so right now we could try and repair whatever is in here but I'll show you let's go ahead and hit repair and this, these little arrows show you the surface normals. Now, surface normals used to be a much bigger deal on old CAD systems in the 90s. We would have to flip them so that the surf, actually the surface has an outside and an inside. And if they were reversed, you could, even though you had a surface there, it wouldn't recognize it as a solid. So it couldn't stitch together, so you had to flip them. Um, nowadays, there's really not much of that issue. I haven't seen that issue in a long time. Uh, because CAD systems have just gotten better. You have the ability in here to repair tangency. Um, there's some other options, display original surfaces and things like that. Just go ahead and cancel that. We're not going to do that. But let's go, we know that there's these openings here. So let's go to boundary blend. Um, by the way, I would actually select surfaces. Like you could go to the view and go to the colors and, and make all the inside colors one color, all the outside colors. Uh, another co color to get this effect and that's what I used to do when I'd repair these I spend hours um, at one point I worked on a truck for an on, uh, automotive manufacturer and um, it we got an IGES file and I had to I spent almost a month fixing it because it was missing like parts of the fender it was missing all these little details so you could spend a lot of time on this 
depending upon what the geometry you get. Okay, so what we're going to do, the way this works, you see there's first and second direction. So the first direction, click here, and then hold control. Don't forget to hold control when you do this, otherwise it deselects those. Now see these little buttons here? Right click, and you have to hold the right mouse button down. And in this case, we want tangency. Now if it were a free form object, like an automotive body panel, you might want curvature, which is what they get called G2 or C2, curvature continuity. It's an additional, instead of a radius, it's actually points. And we discussed that with the bottles already, so you don't need to know that. Now go ahead and click on this second direction, hold control, select these two. Now right click, make that tangent. Right click here, make this tangent. And that just makes sure it's smooth. Okay, and hit okay. There's our patch. Let's go do the next one over here. All right, so boundary blend. Control select the two that are across from each other. Make sure you right click on these buttons, make them tangent. Can you get away without tangent on something like this? Yeah, maybe, um, but it really adds that level of detail, how it really should be by doing that. So I just went ahead and I selected the second direction and changed those to tangent as well. I believe there's a way to get it to always go in tangent. Um, somewhere I thought I saw it in here. Uh, add inner tangency. Yeah, okay. I, I think it's in there. If someone sees it, go ahead and just comment below. I can't remember where that is. All right, so now we have to go into here. And get this. Now, by the way, that repair tool does get all the small little gaps. It's just these big ones that can't handle them, usually the visible ones. And you could also set the um, parameters where we set the uh, aluminum for the material in that same area down below a couple of boxes. You could actually set the tessellation of the actual um, tolerance of these uh, surfaces and how close they come to each other or how far apart. And that sometimes helps too. That's another strategy. I haven't had to use it too often though. Usually I could fix all this. So click on this one here and then hold control, select this one here. Now you see it goes across. Now let's go and control select these two. All right, and let's make sure that we go with tangency on these. I'm just gonna do them all at the end. All right, hit OK. Now, it would be wonderful if we could just hit the repair. And I did this a couple years ago, and I created in version 2 of Creo. And um, what I'm about to do, I export it and then re-import it and fix it because I can't figure out a way to solidify it. And I had someone comment below that there's a way of doing it, but they didn't really describe it well, and I could never figure it out. And nor have I really, um, I, I looked for some information about it, but I really never did uncover it. So uh, if one of you ever knows this other option to versus what I'm about to do, which is exporting it and then re-importing it, let me know. But importing uh, isn't that big of a deal. So, all right, we've got this repair tool, unfortunately, is not available for us. Let's hit OK. All right, we're back out here. Now, here is the uh, add material, and then there are body options here. Let's try and create a new body but I don't think it does anything let's hit the this all right and normally one way I know it doesn't do anything is the color of the patch still is the same all right so we're not really seeing anything here um, let's see did we turn it up okay hit okay oh I was a little quick there all right it did something but let's just verify go to mass properties preview it's all zero. So there was no effect there. And like I said, someone mentioned there's a way to do it, but um, I'm going to show you differently. So here, let's go to File, go to Save As, a copy, and just do an adjust again. Now I know I've done this step, but for some strange reason, I couldn't do that. So I'm going to call it uh, F, E22F, and hit OK. Now I'm going to go to open. I'm going to select iGES. 
U22F, import. And now I'm going to go to the details. And under the details here, if you go to the topology, make sure you go to heal, turn on close gaps, repair. We don't need correct tangency. Go ahead and hit OK. And hit OK. And when it brings it in, now we can see they're no longer blue. Let's test this out. Go to File, Prepare, Model Properties, and then Change for the Material Type, Standard Materials. We're going to go with Non-Ferrous again, Aluminum Route. Hit OK. Close, and finally, let's test it out. Analysis, Mass Properties, Preview we have mass. So that completes it. Now why, why do you need that? It's simply because now you could actually cut it apart if you need to. You can modify it. Um, modifying surfaces is not always the easiest thing to do. So this is how you have that ability. And that concludes this exercise.